Hello and welcome. You're watching a special broadcast and I am Sonup Sahadevan. Over the next few minutes, I will take you through the top stories from the world of news, business, sports and entertainment. To begin with, some news that will make you very angry. The mother of three-month-old Ahuti Joshi finally confessed that she repeatedly beat her baby out of frustration. The baby was brought to a Mumbai hospital where the doctors suspected domestic violence right from the very beginning. Ultimately, Ahuti finally succumbed to her injuries, having suffered multiple skull fractures from the beating. For the first time since the Upahar Cinema fire tragedy, theatre owner Sushil Ansel said sorry. The businessman apologised to the members of the family victims, saying that he would also open up a trauma centre for burn injury patients. However, those who lost their family members have rejected this apology, saying that it is too little, too late. A gruesome crime reported in the city of Pune. Two females and a child killed in their apartment in the wee hours of the morning. Police suspect that robbery could be a motive. But what is hampering the investigation is that the only eyewitness in this case has been critically injured. Triple murders have just made the crime graph for the city look even more sinister. Despite his best efforts, Gujarat Chief Minister Narendra Modi has been unable to draw Congress President Sonia Gandhi into a verbal duel. Congress President Sonia Gandhi is currently campaigning in the state ahead of the state assembly elections. Mr. Modi has been targeting the Congress and more specifically its president and her foreign roots. It was round one to Republican candidate Mitt Romney in the race for the presidential elections in the US. Romney battled back with an aggressive debate performance that saw Barack Obama stagger. With just five weeks to go before the November 6th election, Romney is really prepping himself up and the camp of Obama is busy strategizing to make a comeback and fast. I'm standing about 10 kilometers away from Shardara railway station in Northeast Delhi. This is the exact place where Sub-Inspector Rohit Srivastava was found dead yesterday night. Police sources believe that he was run over by a train coming from Sonpat station which happens to be the next station after Shardara. In fact, the place where I'm standing right now, there are two rail tracks out here. One towards my left and the other to my right, both separated by a distance of about 20 meters. I would request my camera person to kindly pan his camera towards my right. The rail track that you see out there on your screens is the same track on which trains coming from Sonpat run. And the spot marked there very near to the track with a white chalk, that is the exact spot where Rohit's body was discovered. In fact, Rohit's body was so badly disfigured that police had to actually use his official ID card to establish identification. As for now, Rohit's body has been sent to Guru Tegh Bahadur Hospital for a post-mortem. And even as we await the post-mortem reports, speculations in Shardara are already rife that Rohit committed suicide. It is believed that Rohit was suffering from some depression due to a property dispute in his family and he was also on medical leave in fact for since the past few days. Police too are saying that this could be a clear case of suicide and there is no reason to suspect the involvement of any foul play in any manner whatsoever. With camera person Sanjeet Sain, this is Sonup Sardevan reporting from Shardara for Studio Talk. The rupee continued its downslide for the third straight day yesterday by losing a hefty 25 paise to finally end at a six-week low of 55.91 on heavy dollar demands amid weak trends in local stock markets. A strong dollar overseas ahead of ECB's meeting on interest rates slated for today also weighed on the rupee. At the interbank foreign exchange market, the domestic unit resumed lower at 55.75 a dollar from the previous close of 55.66 and immediately shot up in the morning session itself to 55.74 but again fell down again in the morning session itself to 55.99 before settling in at 55.91. This figure of 55.91 has been the lowest since 56.16 for the domestic unit rupee on July 25, 2012. 
We'll be right back after a very short break. But coming up on the other side, Usain Bolt is ready to push the limits. And Rani Mukherjee is all set for her new release, Aya. Welcome back. You're watching a special broadcast. And on to news from the world of sports now. All eyes will be on Chris Gale tonight as West Indies take on hosts Sri Lanka in the T20 World Cup final. Going by the nature of the game, it is expected for the big hitting batsman to go all out and make merry. Come tonight and we will know if the home advantage works well for the Lankans. Meanwhile in football, Chelsea brushed Norwich City aside 4-1 to open up a four-point lead at the top of the Premier League. Chelsea fell behind earlier in the game till Fernando Torres hit back and brought them back in the game and moved up by 19 points at the top of the championship. Meanwhile, reigning Olympic sprint champion and world record holder Usain Bolt has said that he will push himself to the limit and try and run the 100-meter world record race in just 9.4 seconds. Bolt's world record as of today stands at 9.58 seconds and he will be competing in his first European race of the season at the Golden Spike meet. Meanwhile, Ande Mare was stunned in the Japan Open by Milos Raonic, thereby ending Mare's defense of his Tokyo title. Mare, who lost his temper on several locations, finally lost the game to Milos Raonic by 6-7, 7-6, Welcome back. On to news from the world of entertainment. Her quirky lines to her sizzling hot dance moves, Rani's Aya is sure been creating a buzz. I caught up with a sultry actress who was in a mood to chat about almost everything under the sun. And why not? After all, she has a movie to promote at hand. And guess what? She even discussed her much speculated wedding with me. It's a classic tale of the clash of two male egos. And the two male egos in question are that of Arjun Rampal and Abhay Diol. We got you this very hot scoop straight from the horse's mouth with director Prakash Jha speaking up on this issue. It's the beginning of a brand new innings for the evergreen Rekha. And she now switches roles from an actor to a member of the Rajya Sabha. She in fact took oath in the parliament draped in a golden sari and spent just 19 minutes there. But for those 19 minutes, all eyes were on this evergreen diva. And now it's time for you to check out the best exotic Marigold Hotel, a British comedy set up in Rajasthan with a stellar star cast. Go check out as Judy Dench shares the experiences of her spectacular stay at this hotel. Well, that's all we have time for now. This is Sonup Sahadevan saying goodbye. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for more.